So this will be a discussion of problem number five from the 2023 AP stats for your response set. Number five is typically the place where the problem involving a little bit from several units of the course is going to sit, and that's definitely the case here. We're going to have the beginning of this coming from unit two and then the tail end coming from unit nine. So the situation that's presented here, we have this scatter plot. The scatter plot is going to allow us to relate on the x-axis the chest circumference of a certain species of deer, tool elk, found in California. So it's going to relate the chest circumference measured in centimeters with the weight measured in kilograms on the y-axis. Uh, it's this problem statement here. I won't read it verbatim, but basically they're saying that it's difficult to weigh this species of deer. They would have to capture the deer, uh, weigh them, and then release them. But what's easy to do when they're in the wild is to measure their chest circumference with, I think they say, a harmless laser. Yeah, so with a harmless laser, they're able to make this uh, measurement that we see specified on the x-axis. So they did actually have 30 male t tool elk and they were able to measure their chest circumference and these deer they did capture and they did weigh them so they don't want to have to capture every tool elk in the future in order to weigh it they want to be able to measure its chest circumference and hopefully make a prediction about its weight from its chest circumference so part a says describe the relationship between chest circumference and the weight of the male tool elk in context and even when they don't say to do this it's definitely something you should be in the habit of doing within your ap stats verbal responses so i realized right away that if we look at that scatter plot as the chest circumference increases the weight of the deer is also increasing so I wanted to make that judgment right away. So as chest circumference measured in centimeters of a male tool elk, and it seems a little much to talk about the units and talk about what we're measuring, uh, but definitely has to be in context, right? So as the chest circumference measured in centimeters of a male tool elk increases, the weight of the male tool elk in kilograms also increases. Now that's not going to cut it if you're asked to describe a relationship in a scatter plot. The things you have to make sure you hit on for success on the AP stats FRQs, form, direction, and strength. So form, it's a linear trend. We can go back and look at the scatter plot again to confirm that a line would fit into this fairly nicely. Uh, it is a positively sloped line, right? So that would be the direction, definitely a positive slope. That's basically what we said as our kickoff to our response here for part A. Uh, and then I said strong. There's no real line in the sand that you would draw to say this is the threshold that takes it from being moderate relationship to strong relationship uh i i think a line is going to fit pretty nicely into this so i think you get away with saying strong i think you can get away with saying moderate i don't think you'd want to say weak in this case uh moderate or strong would probably be okay for the strength of the relationship part b says that if we generate a least squares regression line relating chest circumference and weight for the male tool elk this is the equation that we get so the y over here is the predicted weight and that's backed up by what we saw in the scatter plot and that's equal to they have the y-intercept listed first plus the slope here and then times the x-axis variable which is chest circumference they say that one of the male tool elk that they were able to actually weigh had a chest circumference of 145.9 centimeters and a weight of 204.3 kilograms. Use the equation of the least squares regression line to calculate the predicted weight for this particular male tool elk. Well, the x axis variable is the variable that we would be able to measure and predict the weight from if they want to be able to use this plan moving forward and not have to capture the deer in order to weigh them. So I'm taking that 145.9, I'm putting it in place of the chest circumference in the prediction equation, and my predicted weight after I toss that into the calculator ends up being 196.168 kilograms. Part two of part B asks us to calculate the residual for this male tool elk. Show your work. So a residual is always the actual data point minus what's predicted for that data point from the least squares regression line equation. So the actual Y was 204.3 minus the predicted y that we computed back here gives us the residual. When a residual is positive, 
that means that the predicted value was beneath the actual value and when a residual is negative that means that we had the opposite being true least squares regression line predicted a value higher than the actual data point part c asks us to using use that same equation and interpret the slope of the least squares regression line within context so I always like to think about the units of the slope calculation prior to making the interpretation. A slope calculation is y values divided by x values. So here our y values are measured in kilograms and our x values are measured in centimeters. So the units of the slope calculation are going to end up being kilograms per centimeter. So the value of the slope is this 3.7455. So I would go up by 3.7455 kilograms per every one centimeter that I gain in chest circumference. And that's, you see, what I've noted here. Once again, they were nice enough to tell us, make sure this is happening in context. So what you need to make sure you do is reference units, make sure that you're uh, talking about what population we're measuring and that would be the the male tool elk uh, so little details that seem like they're not a big deal definitely can become a big deal if they're left out of your responses in AP stats FRQs last part of this says that there's another species of deer that's similar in size to the tool elk and the slope of the population regression line relating chest circumference and weight for this type of deer, male sandbars, is 4.5 kilograms per centimeter. Biologist wants to determine whether the slope of the population regression line for the male tool elk is different, right, so that's definitely significant, is different than that for the sandbars. So we're going to let beta represent the slope of the population line for the male tool elk. The wildlife biologist conducted a test with the following hypotheses using the sample of 30 tool elk. So this is the same sample of 30 tool elk. Now we know that the slope of the least squares regression line for the sandbar is positive 4.5. So the sandbar species would gain 4.5 kilograms for every one centimeter increase in chest, chest circumference. They go on to say that the test statistic that would get calculated from our sample of tool elk would be 3.408. I think there might be a little bit of a flaw here. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if we're computing a test statistic, it would always be what was measured. And what was measured from our sample for our least squares regression slope is right here, 3.7455, minus what's assumed to be true from the null hypothesis divided by the standard error measure. We don't have to do the calculation, but just because our measured slope for our least squares regression line is different than the assumed to be true slope from the null hypothesis, this technically should be negative. Either way, you do get the same conclusion. And the reason why you get the same conclusion, the reason why it's not that big of a deal, is because this is a situation where your alternative is two-sided. So you ultimately have to check the negative version of that, that T value as well. And I guess I should say this is a significant this is a significance test for a slope of a least squares regression line for a population slope. That's going to be a T distribution and the degrees of freedom for that T distribution for slope is always going to be two fewer than the sample size. And so if you use your calculator to find the area of one of these tails, uh, that is going to have to get doubled in order to get you the sum of the area of the two tails, that P value is all we're asked for. That p-value is really tiny, uh, so we would have significant evidence suggesting that uh, the alternative is likely to be the, the one of these that is true.